So the role of the speech and language therapist in managing um, and supporting head and neck cancer patients is absolutely critical. Up to one year following treatment, we know that swallowing is a priority concern for patients. Um, and one of the most important things we need to bear in mind is it has a huge impact on quality of life if you've got difficulty with eating and drinking. That affects how you eat with your family, it affects how you eat when you go out to restaurants, what you're able to choose off the menu. So there are, there are real bigger set of problems for patients after their treatment. They've been successfully treated for their head and neck cancer, but the swallowing can really impact on their ability to integrate um, socially, see friends, be with family. And the reason for that is there are safety and efficiency issues. When you swallow, it has to be safe. And what we know from the literature in head and neck cancer patients is that there is a risk of aspiration or food or liquid going down the wrong way towards the lungs. And in head and neck cancer, this is a particular concern because with the radiation effects, patients can't always feel that things are going down the wrong way. And that's known as silent aspiration. And if that's not managed appropriately and patients go get the support that they need, that has the possibility of leading to uh, a pneumonia, a chest infection, um, which could be life-threatening. Then, in addition to that safety issue, there are also issues around swallowing efficiency. So how well does the swallow actually work pushing food down, pushing drinks down? If you end up with food that's getting caught in your throat because you haven't got the strength to push it down, that can lead to um, nutrition issues. And also, if you're having difficulty with swallowing, it, there's the potential to also have your hydration affected. So it's, it's safety and efficiency creating those health effects. And that's why it's really important speech therapists are involved um, to provide detailed advice. We provide pre-treatment assessments. So every patient is seen before their treatment. And as part of that, we provide counseling, supporting the patient with what they should expect as they go through the treatment. We will then carry out a very detailed assessment, as we did with the DAR study, to understand not only the patient's perspective, but also to get those clinician-rated measures and, if we need to, um, the x-rays or other instrumental, we call them swallowing measures, to understand how their swallowing is working. That helps us to contribute then to decisions with the multidisciplinary team on how best these people are going to be supported during their treatment and we link in with our doctors but also with dietitians. We will then see patients throughout their treatment on a weekly basis as speech and language therapists and as they recover. And while people will make a gradual recovery after treatment and it can take some time for people to recover and even though they may get back to eating and drinking, even though they may get out going to restaurants etc, there may still be some issues which impact on their ability to really enjoy their eating and drinking. And for some people, they may go through a period of time of eating and drinking relatively well, and then they have what we call a late treatment effect and their swallowing starts to become more difficult for them. And that's why the DAR study is so critical because we're monitoring people, not just during that acute phase, but up to two years afterwards to see how this evolves for them and how the swallowing is. And the important thing about avoiding those muscles of swallowing is that we can hopefully uh, improve their swallowing, not only in the acute phase, but in the longer term. And that's the really important thing for me.